My caddisfly hatch kind of ended up here on this fishery. I can this caddis hat this caddis hatch has been going on for about a week, but I know these hatches all too well. Now the world of fly fishing, if you can't get them on dries, a surefire way to catch trout. Hopefully, but if they're not coming up on top, you got to switch to wet flies, terrestrials, but preferably nymphs. I'm going to run this hole out here with this little guy right here. This is called a bead, a gold bead-headed prince nymph. Tied up by about a 14, I think. And now what I like to do is I take a toothpick like this and I put a a large corky, a bright corky. That's about a little bit bigger than the size of a large, about the size of a pea, a little bit bigger than that. And what that corky does is it acts like a strike indicator. And this corky in my particular case is located about, oh, six feet up from that prince nymph. And the way you keep the corky in place is you just take a flat toothpick and insert it you know, between the fly line and the corky, and, and then the, what I do is I just break off both ends like that. It's kind of like a shim, if you will, because you, sometimes you can't tell when these trout pick up on those nymphs, but this corky will float, and like I say, it acts like a strike indicator. This is my most favorite way. I call it bobber fishing. <laughs> Because I'm a dry fly fish, fisherman at heart, but remember what I said in the video in the past, the YouTube video in the past, 80 to 90 percent of a trout's diet is nymphs as far as the way the insect cycle and these hatches and the life, the, li the lives of these insects, these waterborne insects. So. That's all there is to it. I'm going to fish this hole for a while with a nymph, and if it doesn't, if I don't do well that way, I'm going to get gone. Thanks.